Hey everyone, FPS Chazel here. Welcome to the RA 1.42B and a 1.43 changelog video. So I'm, I'm combining these because the 1.42B one wasn't too extensive and the 1.43 was also short. So the first change up is that a few Russian torpedoes have different 3D models here. We have the 6576, got the 5365K. Let these 3D models circle around here a little bit. That is the correct button. 5365KE. I think the K and the KE have the same 3D model there. You got the 5365M. The same model as well. And then also the set 65M and ME, which probably have the same model there too. That is interesting. There's a set 65 and a set 65E, but I'm not seeing a set 65ME. Well, there's your set 65E. So now we're in 1.42B. Let's check out the 6576 3D. Yeah, it's definitely different looking. I think prior it was using the stock model. 5365K. That model's looking the same. That's interesting. What about, uh, did I, I think I did KE that time. What about K? And then M. Yeah, they seem to have the same model as before. And then the set 65 which was referred to as set 65 M and M E in the change log, but it's just, there's no M here. So let's see about this one. Yeah, that's different. All right. So there you go. New models for those torpedoes in case you, uh, launch one and are like, did I launch the right torpedo? Also included with RA 1.42 B we have on the right here, the revision 3.8 of the RA weapon info guide it was at 3.7 for a while. I just skimmed through it. Um, there aren't, I'm not completely sure of the entirety of the changes, but this table of contents has uh, been reformatted a little bit. And if we scroll down here, it now has a section that explicitly discusses the weapon malfunctions. You don't have to just go into the change log to see this. Yeah, that's all I've seen for now. So, uh, you know, you'll probably notice, you might notice differences as you go through and look at some weapons and their functionalities again. So if you see any of those differences, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So this is change number seven for 1.42B. If we come here to own ship information tab, maximum and minimum depths, altitude sensors. So information about the different platforms. If we come to Los Angeles flight three here and we scroll down, they've added in uh, the conditions for successful weapon launch now. So missiles for the LA flight three, you got Harpoon, TASM, TLAM, 150 feet shallower and a max speed of six knots. And down here for special forces, you got, you know, not less than three feet from periscope depth. And I don't know if that means deeper or shallower. I'm assuming deeper and then max speed of three knots. If we come back to like an Akula three, there may be more extensive stuff down here. Yeah. You got all these different missiles and, uh, you know, depths and speeds for them, but these can launch wow at 15 knots. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's that change. Definitely cool to have that info easy to obtain now, especially with all the different platforms and uh, how how the launch depth and speed can vary as such from platform to platform. Uh, so this is change number nine for 1.42B for the Seawolf. They have added in, I think this has been in here for longer than this, but maybe not. The Sea Lance ASW sub rock has been added and I can understand why. Uh, uh, and to add this, the TASM was removed. I can understand why, but it's a weapon that has never existed, so I don't know. I get it because the Russian boats and other boats can have the standoff missiles, but the U.S. subs don't, but I feel like that's part of the balancing of like how the U.S. subs are quieter, but they don't have the standoff weapons, but the other subs aren't quieter, but they do have the standoff weapons. Anyway, you won't catch me using this. That's just me, but feel free to have at it. This is item number 12 in change log. 1.4 for 1.42 B in one point. So from 1.42 to 1.42 B, the sonar displays of the kilo improved have been increased in brightness. So we're here in 1.42, 1.42 to check that out. And, uh, let's get a good stock of the situation. I guess checking out in broadband is probably good enough here. And as long as we, uh, doing a quick mission, so I'll have to maintain these parameters when we go over to 1.42B, but it looks pretty bright here right now, but let's go to 1.42B and check it out. So now we're back here in 1.42B. Let's take a look at the sonar. 
Yeah, okay, this is definitely brighter in here. This is definitely brighter, so that's good. I remember sometimes it was tricky to see stuff, but never really had much of the issue with the red. I like the red. It's that, like, stock Akula display where this is more like a gray back here. That can be hard to see stuff on, but this is good. Yeah, it's definitely brighter. And uh, I mean, it'll be good to take note of that because if you've developed a certain intuition for these brightnesses, we have to recalibrate that because this will make stuff seem like it's closer than it really is. So in 1.42, uh, you were able to put UGSTs into the external tubes, but they've changed that now. Maybe quote unquote fixed that so that the UGSTs can now only go inside the internal tubes. And uh, that's good. I like that. Even so, still having eight tubes, it's you still got a pretty nice setup with the Akula, not having to worry about what's actually in your tubes, having to wait for that 18-minute loaded tube reload time. Uh, this is item 18 for 1.42b. Statometer crashed to desktop issue resolved. So if we go through here and uh, go scrolling through some stuff, we might get ourselves to a CTD here at some point definitely experienced this issue before and I feel like this came up in the last change log video doesn't seem like it's being an issue right now I know sometimes it seemed like it may have been platform dependent I'm not even sure if I've gone through all the ships yet <laughs> I probably have so let's go ahead and check this out on another platform have I gone through all of them yet I don't know where did I get this issue before? I'm on a skipjack right now. I feel like I've gotten this on the Seawolf, so let's check out the Seawolf then. Alrighty, we're here in the Seawolf. Let's uh, just freaking check it out. I think if we're like, oh, well, it's going slow at least. It's going really slow. <laughs> I think this one is limited to a certain class. It may not have been this. We may have to go to the 688. Anyway, they said, the point of it is that they said it wasn't completely fixed in 1.42b. It's definitely like going slow at some point. Let's go ahead and check this out with the 688i. Alrighty, we're here with the 688i and I definitely got a crash to desktop with this in my freaking when I was doing a sever morse commission as the 688i. So let's take a photo and try and recreate that situation and let's just freaking start going through them. Let's see if we get a crash to desktop here. And we'll just click through them here. Let me just make sure I'm watching where I've been. So it'll just go over this doubly. I don't I have no idea how any of this I think it's supposed to be organized by country in here. But sometimes it I sometimes I just don't even get sometimes how it's sorted by in here. It's not alphabetical. And it's not always just by country. Anyway, keep on clicking there, partner. I might run out of clicks before I might run out of patience before I run out of clicks. <laughs> so we're not seeing anything so far. Uh, we're getting it with this anyway. They said there was an issue where it was still showing up, and what the hell was that? A marker <laughs> where it was still showing up in uh, 1.42b. So uh, I feel like I remember seeing that on the boards at some point. So we'll just take their word for it. And anyway, it's fixed in 1.43 now, hopefully. So since I can't re recreate it here in 1.42b, I'm not going to try testing it in 1.43. So now we're into 1.43 additions and corrections. And we're here in uh, my ping test map. I use this to develop ranges for pings, which may or may not be valid data anymore. Anyway, the changelog states that now the active sonar ping timing is based on so originally, it would show up on your active sonar when the ping first reach a contact, but it wouldn't take into account that the bounce has to come back to you, that timing. So let's put this side by side with 1.42b. Excuse me, we're in 1.42b now, so let's put this, this will be side by side to 1.43 so you can see the differences. So we're here in 1.42b. There was a correction in 1.43 where this is a uh, number seven in the change log where the 
MAD profiles of the Alpha, Sierra 1, and Sierra 2 SSNs were corrected, so let's check it out here in 1.42b. I'm assuming this means we're not going to pick them up on MAD. We're at 200 feet. They're at 300 feet depth. We've got the MAD turned on. Let's see what happens. No MAD contact for the Alpha. We can speed this up. No MAD contact for the Sierra 1. And no MAD contact for the Sierra 2. Well, let's see what happens now in 1.43 that these have been corrected. Now we're here in 1.43, so let's uh, overfly this Alpha. Mad, mad, mad. There you go. Just uh, double checking that here. Let's come up over here and speed this up. Come over up to the Sierra 1. Mad, mad, mad. mad, mad. mad. And then finally for the Sierra 2. Mad, mad, mad. mad. There mad. you go. Very good. All right, so the reason this makes sense is because although these things have titanium pressure hulls there's definitely still steel inside of them uh, and a lot of steel so it's picking that up and that's good so thanks for watching this uh, changelog video I'll try and do a better job of keeping up with them as they come out in the future so I'll see you guys later have a good one and as always good hunting